Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. This is part two of the Tale of Two Trappists. So if you haven't seen part one, stop, go back, go back. You can't see the ending, you gotta see the beginning. Basically, we did a six gallon batch of the Tale of Two Trappists, which are basically Trappist singles. And we did a six gallon batch on a Anvil Foundry 10.5 system. And we cut it in half. And before I tell you what else I did, don't forget to like, subscribe. If you love beer, make sure that red subscribe button is not red anymore. Make it go away. You don't want that bright color. Turn it gray, whatever, just click on it. Go for it. I definitely appreciate it. What we did is we took that, if you, and if you don't know what a Trappist single is, if you know what a triple is, a Belgian triple, very, 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 very much the same, except the difference primarily is the alcohol level. One's a little more sessionable, maxing out around 6%. The other one, you know, we all know, hits up around nine usually. So what I went for is a sessionable Trappist or Belgian style beer. And I did, I took the six gallons, I split it in half. I put three gallons in one carboy, which you can see the other one you probably can't see. I dropped another three gallons in there. And then I split it with White Labs. I did White Labs 530. 530 gives off cherry, plum, pear type esters. So we should get lots of really great fruity esters. No one, you know, not tropical, not citric, just good solid fruit esters. A little bit of spice because we dropped in three ounces of styrian golding in the last five minutes. And then in the next three gallons, I dropped White Labs 545, which is known for sage and cracked black pepper, which I love cracked black pepper nuances within beer. It's, it's awesome. I like, uh, I think it's Pacific Jade or Jade, something like that. It's a hop out of New Zealand, I believe, because it's known for that. And I think it's lemon and cracked black pepper, which works really well too. So what we're gonna do is I'm not even gonna show you the whole transfer of the beer. We're gonna skip all this extra stuff. And then we're just gonna go right on into the taste testing and trying them out. But I know it's gonna seem like seconds for you, but for me, it's gonna be about four or five days because I need to move this 530 over here and the 545 over here. I did drop one teaspoon of gelatin in both with a half a cup of spring water heated up and that will help pull some of that extra yeast and anything else that might be floating around in suspension, which I will tell you on the 530, most of it fell out. It's not clear, but it definitely fell out. On the 545, it's sitting right, up, right on top, just kind of hanging out. So I don't know, it is what it is. I'll get into the gravities and everything during the taste testing. Well, let's rock on. Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. I know you just saw us transfer the beer and I kind of skipped over it. Well, I was told I couldn't brew this beer unless I was brewing it in a monastery. So I met everybody kind of in the middle and I asked if it was okay if a monk brewed it. And I got it, yeah, as long as I had the correct glasses, which hey, we got the correct glasses. And you know, to the faithful monks that watch this channel, it's just entertainment, nothing personal. Thank you and I hope you keep viewing, keep subscribing. We have the White Labs, this is my son Drew. This is White Labs 530. This is White Labs 545. Is and if you 530, 545. Okay. And we have great head retention on this. I mean, uh, kind of overcarbonated a little bit and the foam was just not wanting to die down. But came out around 5.9, 6% on both of them. They were bouncing back and forth a little around the 1.008, 1.009. Not too worried about this. This is a Trappist single and I based it loosely on a Trappist single by Ballast Point that was a recipe they put out for home brewing. And yeah, I, I just, he loves triples. I'm not quite into the high ABV and I've been brewing enough oh, high yeah. ABV. Yeah. <laughs> he loves those like, and I have one blend. But I said, you know what? Let's do a Trappist single and let's make it spicy, but let's try fruit and let's try spicy. And the 530 is supposed to give us cherry, plum and pear esters. Well, the 545 on the ends over here is supposed to give us more of that strong ale with the dried sage and the cracked black pepper. Okay. And as I can't see without my glasses, we're gonna have to put them on. I had mentioned at the very end, I used three ounces of Styrian Golding as the basically a finishing hop, not really a bittering. The bittering was Holotar Magnum. I want a little spice going on, no matter if it was fruity or not. So I'm gonna let him try it. I've already had a tiny sample when I was trying to get it up to carbonation level. Try the 530 and you give me your feedback on that. And I'm gonna try it just because, you know, it's finally carbonated. Don't want to poison the tree. I want everything from him to tell me what he thinks. Yeah, I mean, it's very fruity. Um, I think he said, he said pears in it? 
or meant to be kind of in it? Or? Yeah, according to 530, you're supposed to get a little cherry, a little plum. I can taste a little bit of the cherry. Plum. I taste the plum and the aftertaste, the cherry up front. The pear, I guess, you know, are esters, and I do notice a fruit on the nose when I go to drink it, I smell, but I can't really place it. It smells more like a, a little bit of a, a mildly dark fruit. I don't know how you explain that. Maybe mm -hmm. you know, a mild cherry or mild... That's what I was about to say was, like, it smells like it has a darker... Fruit, fruit somewhere in there. ...flavor, but when you taste it, it's a lot lighter. It's a lot lighter. And for me, I actually felt it was a little thin for a beer. I mean, we did add one pound of candy sugar, and it just, it was a lot lighter, a lot thinner than I thought, but it's 5.9 to 6%. It's a very, very, very sessionable beer, even at that yeah. ABV. It's very good. It's just, yeah, instead of that dark fruit, up around the nose, it's just like a light fruit flavor throughout. So yeah, it's very mild, very smooth. Something, somebody who likes a blonde ale wants to step up a little bit, that would be a perfect one and not like my golden ale. So I'm gonna let you go for the 545. I like the 545 mm. better. But I, as I mentioned, I like a lot of spice, and he usually does too, but he's also into that fruit stuff going on with the triples. I didn't really smell it before. Whoa, the 530 has a lot more to me. I don't hardly notice anything on the 545 or smell. I did at first. Um, just has a stronger smell, but it still has like a good kind of fruity smell. Okay, I'll say a hint. This is much stronger for you. You didn't make, yeah, you didn't make some up. No. So. Very different from that one. A much more mouthfeel. Yeah, I can see that. It's got a mouthfeel to it. This one tastes almost, before it was carbonated, it tasted almost a hint on the watery side to me, but not bad watery, just very thin. Now it tastes fine, but this has definitely got a mouthfeel. It's the same everything except the yeast. I'm not really getting as much as the spice, as was mentioned, for the yeast. Um, it kind of comes across as like a darker fruit version of that. Wow, me, yeah. Least. I noticed the spice, but only at the maybe, very end. Like maybe it's just the mouthfeel that makes it seem that way. Yeah. I, but they are very similar. I could see that. I could definitely see that. Okay, my initial taste, I can taste a little bit of the fruit desane. I didn't notice it as much. It's kind of like a fuller fruit flavor. I would agree. Instead of like a lighter. But I think that has to do with the mouthful, mouthfeel because you're it's lingering. You kind of that flavor lingers yeah. for a moment longer. You can kind of get some spice. It's just more like the, On the back end? peppercorn kind of spice than than the uh, sage. Thing. I taste a little more to the sage, even though I normally taste pepper because I love black pepper. He knows he had me try one of those, you know, what was that ghost pepper? Oh dad, it tastes like black pepper. I mean, yeah. yeah, like blisters yeah, in my mouth. Same yeah. Thing, but yeah. yeah, no thank you. They're different tastes. <laughs> yeah, he can tolerate the heat much more than I can, but like this definitely is like spicier to me. It is spicier, but I get it on the finish more than I get it anywhere else. I noticed your fruits in the beginning, mm -hmm. but I don't think they're as strong as the fruits over here. It's just that they linger longer with that mouthfeel, almost like it's mm -hmm. it's kind of sitting on your tongue for a it moment. Gives you more time to actually. Gives you more time yeah. to absorb it and go, oh yeah, over here it's gone, and you're like, wait, what was that? <laughs> it's gone. You're like, where'd it go? But yeah, and this was brewed on the Anvil Foundry. There's tons of other all-in-ones that can easily brew six gallons. So all we did was we brewed six gallons of a standard beer. Basically it's a Pilsner, eight pounds of Pilsner, and I could be off a little. This was the recipe before I made a little modification to it. But it was eight pounds of Pilsner, eight ounces or half a pound of Carahel, four ounces of acid malt to keep our pH, which we nailed at 5.22. I was not gonna touch that, that was perfect. Four pounds of Caravine malt, one pound of Simplicity candy syrup, and then we did a bittering at 60 minutes, or actually 30 minutes with Holotor Magnum, three ounces of Styrian Golding to kind of give a little spice, Split it three gallons here, three gallons there, and pitch two different yeasts, and that was it. And I can't remember which one. I want to say it was the 545, but I could have them backwards. I'd have to double check. One of them stalled, and it just sat there. Well, the other one just, 530, was just cranking through, and 545 stalled right about the 1.044 and sat there for almost two days and then finished. Mm. And no time, caught right up to the other one, but I was a little scared. <laughs> I was afraid the whole test was gone south. So, but... Thank you for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing and the Brewing Monk here. Don't forget, like, subscribe. Hey, if you had a little chuckle, come on, give me a subscribe and a like. I appreciate it. Thank you again. Thank you. And that's it. That's a wrap. Yeah, yeah they're very good, very drinkable. I would say if I was eating something, I'd have this one. And if I was just drinking something, I'd have that one. <laughs>